Shadow Slave. By Guilty Three. Chapter 1243 Searching for Light. By the time Sunny flew close enough to distinguish the source of the white spark, it had already disappeared. However, finding the source was not too hard, there were not a lot of things that could be distinguished from the empty expanse of flowing water on the Great River, after all. By then, it was already morning. The suns were slowly rising from below, and the world was enveloped in the dim glow of twilight. The soft radiance of the shimmering water had dissipated, making it easier for Sunny to see colors. Hovering high above the current, he froze. There was a stunned expression on his face. How is this possible? Far below him, a vast span of the great river was painted red. Blood was clouding the clear water, and the polluted patch of it was at least half a dozen kilometers across. From high up, it looked as if a bloody flower was slowly blooming in the middle of the river. At the center of the red patch, a familiar great monster was floating lifelessly, the silver bands encasing its neck broken and bent. The black turtle was dead. There was a vicious wound at the spot where its neck met its body. The wound was large enough to be a tunnel, with rivers of blood still flowing out of it into the water. The equally gruesome exit wound was all the way across the monster's massive body, just below one of its armored flippers. Shaken, Sonny lingered for a while, and then looked down, at the spot where his pursuer was hiding beneath the water. At that moment, the azure serpent rose its head above the surface and stared at Sonny with mad fury burning in its cloudy eyes. The great beast looked battered and maimed, with several huge chunks of flesh missing from its long neck. But it was undeniably alive. He had thought once that the azure serpent was like a little snake in front of the colossal turtle. But from the looks of it, that little snake had managed to burrow into the body of the larger monster, tear it from the inside, and escape back into the river to catch up to Sunny. The old snake must be a queen. King. Of beasts. It actually took down a monster. He was slightly impressed. But mostly, he was disturbed. Being pursued by a great beast was already bad enough, but now that he knew that the Azure Serpent was a fearsome existence among the creatures of its class, the situation seemed even worse. Damnation. Sonny and the ancient Leviathan stared at each other some more, and then he turned back to the island-sized corpse of the Black Turtle. In any case, now that he saw the result of the battle between the two great abominations, he had to admit that the source of the white spark had to be hidden somewhere on the dead turtle's shell. There was simply northwest other place anywhere around that could have produced it. Sonny observed the carcass of the great monster for a while, not daring to descend yet. After thinking for a while, he summoned Morgan's warbow and made a black arrow appear on its string. Then, he ordered one of his shadows to wrap itself around the arrow, drew the string, and released it. The arrow shot through the air and struck the green moss covering the monster's shell. Piercing the layer of soft moss, it then hit the weathered black rock and splintered without leaving even a scratch on its surface. The arrow was destroyed, but the shadow had already been transported on the dark island. The gloomy guy looked around, shivered, and then glanced at the sky with a resigned expression. His resentful gaze seemed to deal damage directly to Sonny's conscience. Sonny shifted a little. What are you staring at? I have a very clear conscience. The clearest conscience in two worlds, it's a flaw of mine. The sin of Solace, who was standing by his side, quietly chuckled. Ignoring the apparition, Sonny commanded the gloomy shadow to go and explore. Then, he looked at the world through its eyes. The surface of the black turtle's shell was indeed like an island. There were patches of moss covering the weathered rock, while the rock itself was rough and uneven. It was littered with mounds, deep gorges, and even depressions filled with water that looked like small lakes. Here and there, jagged pieces of tarnished silver could be seen. From what Sonny could tell, the great monster had been somehow fashioned with a battle armor of sublime silver in the past. Perhaps thousands of years ago. Now, the silver armor was dull and covered with a dark patina. Most of it was gone, at least on the surface, only the edges of the shell, the neck, the head, and the flippers were still encased in vast bands of the precious metal. The huge chain Sonny had seen before served to fasten the armor to the creature's shell. He did not want to study the nature of the dead abomination in detail right now, though. First, he wanted to find out where the white light had come from. Soon, the shadow noticed something. In the middle of a large patch of moss, there was a spot where it had been burned away, revealing the rock surface beneath. The rock itself was covered by ash and soot. Most importantly, 
there was a palm print in the ash. A human palm print. Sonny's heart suddenly started to beat faster. The gloomy shadow seemed excited, too. It sped up, gliding across the dark island and diving into the deep fissures in the rock shell from time to time. N.Oin and after diving into one of the more shallow gorges, it saw something that made it freeze. Out there in the shade of the fissure, leaning her back on the uneven black rock. A young woman with silver hair was sitting on the ground. Her black clothes were singed and torn, and there was a wild look in her striking gray eyes. She was holding a piece of strange-looking roasted meat in her hands, sinking her teeth into it with a determined expression. Both her fingers and lips were covered in grease. It was Nephi's. As Sunny and the gloomy shadow were staring at her in stunned silence, she suddenly shifted, raised her head and looked directly at the shadow. Her eyes widened a little. Forgetting to chew, Neff lingered for a moment. And then awkwardly waved at the shadow with a greasy hand. Chapter 1244, Damn Great Stake. It's actually her. Sonny did not want to admit it, but he was incredibly excited. A small smile appeared on his face, and he let out a long sigh. Far below, his shadow waved back at Nephi's. He was happy, and not only because it was Neph whom he had found. Sonny was also happy to find anyone at all. After days spent in solitude, he was starting to fear that the strangeness of the great river was much more dire than he had thought, and that he was actually sent into an entirely different nightmare, or perhaps epic, than the other members of the cohort. In fact, he had been suppressing the gnawing fear of being the only human in this flowing world. Thank the gods. Under the watchful gaze of the azure serpent, Sonny retrieved the heavenly burden and glided down in a wide spiral. He was still wary of the great abomination, but had no choice except to land. It was a good thing, too. After spending two days drifting through the empty sky, he longed to stand on something solid again. The small puncture wound left behind by the black needle was completely healed by the time Sonny reached the stone shell of the dead behemoth. To his relief, the ancient serpent did not follow him onto the island. It stayed in the water, staring at the tiny human with hungry madness, luckily, looks could not kill. Well, at least this great beast's gaze could not kill. There were all kinds of nightmare creatures and aspects out there, though. As soon as the soles of his shoes touched the weathered rock, Sonny let out a satisfied sigh. Then, he dismissed the dark wing, bent down to grab the edge of the fissure in front of him, and jumped down. A few moments later, Sonny landed in front of Nephi's. The gloomy shadow slid off the wall and attached itself to his feet. The two of them stared at each other for a bit. Then, Sonny grinned. That smells delicious. Where did you get fresh meat? Nephi's tilted her head and blinked. N. Zero inches a few minutes later, Sonny and Nephi's were sitting opposite each other inside the narrow fissure, finishing the last of the meat she had roasted. The covetous coffer was standing nearby in the form of an alloy chest, its lid open, there was not much food inside by now, but there was still some salt and spices left. With the help of seasoning, the meat tasted sublime. Not that it was easy to chew. Sonny's teeth were incredibly tenacious due to bone weave, and yet, he had to augment himself with a few shadows just to take a bite. And yet, he was thankful for that meat. Without Neff making a fire to roast it, he might not have found her so soon, or even ever at all. It really tastes amazing. Finished with his portion, Sonny glanced at his greasy hands with a bit of regret, and then carefully licked his fingers. Then, he looked at Nephi's and smiled. Hey! Did we really just eat the meat of a great monster? How had his life turned out this way? It was a bit too ridiculous. She nodded and brought the endless spring to her lips, drinking greedily. Yeah. I carved it myself. After the sea serpent left. Hearing this, Sonny shifted awkwardly. As it turned out, Nephi's had been on the shell of the black turtle the whole time. At first, she had appeared within the mist, just like Sonny, but after the mist dissipated, she found herself standing on the surface of the dark island, with no one else in sight. Neff had felt that something was very wrong almost instantly, but it took her a few hours to realize that the rocky island beneath her feet was actually the carapace of a titanic abomination. Then, she slowly explored the shell of the black turtle while trying her best not to awaken the great monster from its slumber. On the second day, the sea serpent had suddenly attacked, waking the turtle up and initiating a harrowing battle. Nephi's had no choice but to hide in one of the fissures and hold on for dear life while being battered, 
doused with water, and tossed around. The pressure and the shock waves of the furious battle between two great abominations almost killed her, that was why her clothes were in such a sorry state. Eventually, though, the serpent managed to burrow into the turtle's flesh and kill it from the inside. After killing the monster, it left. At that point, Nephi's recovered a little, then dove down into the water to carve out some meat to satiate her hunger, as well as quench her thirst. Sunny coughed awkwardly. About that. I'm sorry. She raised an eyebrow, looking at him in confusion. Sorry. Why? He scratched the back of his head. Well. I also entered the nightmare within the mist. Only I was still in the water once it dissipated, on a piece of flotsam. And there was the serpent trying to eat me. So, I escaped into the sky and flew downstream for a while, with the serpent following. Eventually, I stumbled on this turtle. And therefore, so did the sea snake. You, ah. Uh, you know the rest. A strange expression appeared on Neff's face. She stared at him silently, making Sonny let out a nervous laugh. Actually, I was right above you, high in the sky, when they started fighting. We almost missed each other. Luckily, I noticed your flames from afar the next night, and came back. He lingered for a moment, and then smiled. So, it all ended well. Now we are both stuck here. Then, the smile froze on his face. Sonny remained motionless for a bit, then looked away and cleared his throat. Oh, by the way. That sea serpent. Yeah. I might have accidentally led it back here, again. It's currently circling the turtle. Did I say that I was sorry? Nephi stared at him for a while, then lowered her head and covered her face with a palm. Sonny could have sworn that he heard her mumble something under her breath. But he must have heard wrong, right? There was no way Nephi's would say. Damnation.